Yeah, we're going to revise that a little bit. Vertical ones, the graph cannot go through, but if it's horizontal, it can. But don't worry about it. As long as you see where the asymptote is, it doesn't matter if the graph actually crosses it a little bit or not. So the thinking here, why do we have a vertical? I know, we, we tell you things and then we change the rules, right? I do as I say, not as I do. Vertical asymptote. How do you know where it is looking at this function? Pretend that graph's not there. What can't we do? Yet. You can't take the square root of a negative, and you can't do that. So we talked about this in, in language in Math 11 in terms of Um, we can't divide by zero. That's called a restricted value. Okay, can't do it. When's this thing gonna be that? What value of x? Negative one. So we, that's where we have an asymptote. The graph cannot be that point or go through it if it's a vertical asymptote. So that's where the asymptote is. How do I say the domain? It's all real with the exception x can't be that. All right? And I can write it the other way and go x is everything greater than negative 1 or and everything less than negative 1, but that's just a little cleaner. Horizontal asymptotes. This we didn't do in math 11. So where does it look like this guy has an asymptote? Trust me, that's a 1. So right there. Now, the thinking isn't like the graph can be 0. So don't think, well, that's where the numerator is 0 then. OK, that's not really the case. All we want to do is point out where this thing is at the moment. OK, so my domain x. Um, it's something else is going on here, right? X is all real. Okay, X comes, it's all these values, it's these values, and something else is going on here. So my denominator, can I factor this thing? I can maybe do that by inspection because that's just something simple. What multiplies to 2? I only got one choice. What are my signs to make this thing work? Looks like it's that. Double check it. x squared minus 2x minus 1x, that's minus 3x, plus 2. So now we see that x can't be 1 or 2. Okay? This happens to be a 10. So don't go, well, where's the 2? Okay? So the graph, the scale is a little bit wonky here. But all I want to do is take those and put those down here. So like one of them's here. And the other one's right beside it, okay, in this graph. So it's, it's a weird looking thing. That's all I want to put, okay? For, and it doesn't even say domain. domain. Okay, so just kind of getting a feel for how these things look. And speaking of looks, have we seen something look like that before? Oblique, okay? If you hit a pool cue ball, pool cue ball, pool ball, you know what I'm talking about? Obliquely, well, then it's at an angle, right? And we'll talk about that word when we get to physics 12. We'll just keep to the layman's term of oblique slant, okay? Not vertical, not horizontal. Where does it look like I have an asymptote? Right there. And we're telling you where that is. We're going to be figuring that out in a minute. That's the line y equals x. It's not inverse. Even though inverse, we flip it over that line. This isn't inverse, right? If I flip this over here, it definitely doesn't make that. So don't worry about chapter 1 stuff here. All we're telling you is that's my asymptote. Okay, but what's my domain? All real. Goes that way forever up to this point, comes down there, 
starts maybe just on the other side of whatever point this is and goes that way forever, x can't be what? Yeah. Okay, and that's where that is. So that's where I have a vertical asymptote. So I actually have two here, don't I? A hole. What? If you graph that and put it on your graphing calculator, that's what it looks like. But doesn't that kind of look like a line? Sure does. Let's factor this thing. x times x is x squared. What multiplies to 6 and adds to 5? 3 and 2 over x plus 3. What can I do now? I can cancel factors out and does that look like the line y equals x shifted up by 2? Sure does. But there's a problem, right? Remember in grade 11 we told you, you do restrictions first before you start hacking and slashing these factors. Otherwise, looks like now I don't have any restrictions. If you plot this, I will do this one. When you plot this on your graph and calculator, Okay, bracket x squared and 5x and 6 divided by bracket <clears throat> x plus 3, and I graph that. Does it tell me that x can't be negative 3 here? And I haven't seen one of the newer ones, the 84 pluses that are all fancy and you know, they charge you another 40 bucks because they do different colors. But maybe someone could tell me if you have one of those, if that spot's missing. I'm not sure. But what I do know is I can hit trace button and go along with this line for every value of x. And what if I put in minus 3? What's y? It's not giving it to you because the calculator knows you can't do that point. That's what we call a hole. I don't see a hole here, but when x is negative 3, okay, that part of that graph doesn't make sense. It's not possible. Okay, that's undefined. I can't divide by 0. So when we're graphing this thing, sure, any monkey can put that thing in and draw a nice line, but the grade 12 knowledge is, at that point, you better be drawing a hole or you're going to lose all the marks possible. Okay, so that's what we call a hole. It looks like just a nice line, but there's a tiny section that's missing there, right at that point. And even this old calculator here, that's only a hundred bucks, even knows that. Okay, but it doesn't show you graphically, you have to put it in. So the domain, everything's good except that point. Okay. Page two. Let's look a little, dig a little deeper into horizontal asymptotes. The end behavior of this graph tells you what's going on. So we take the extremes, and this is how we graph some of these rational functions in uh, Math 11. So before I actually just plot this in and see what it looks like, Think, if x is huge, like a thousand, this is going to be a thousand squared, which is what? What happens if you make a thousand bucks a thousand times? You're a millionaire. Speaking of finance, okay, five times a thousand is five thousand. Well, what's five thousand compared to a million? Kind of negligible, isn't it? Six, totally negligible. So as x gets really big, this is the only thing I kind of care about. And on the bottom, that's going to be a thousand times a thousand. That's a million. This is two million. Six thousand. It's 
negligible. And if I get bigger values of x, it's even more negligible, right? So as x gets really big, basically this graph is just this thing. And what can I do with my x squareds here? Yeah, if x is a million, okay, I got a million squared over 2 times a million squared. The million squareds cancel off, and what am I left with? Let's see what this thing looks like. Okay, I already got x squared and 5x and 6 in there. It's kind of nice. So all I got to put in is 2x squared plus 6x plus 9. Hmm. Let's go just to negative 3 to 3. Let's blow up x a bit. Let's see what's going on. Not too much. So I just want to double check I got that in because I, when I graphed it before, it looked a little bit differently. Let's blow up y a bit. Negative 3 to 3. It looks kind of flat. Let's kind of... Okay. Now I know what y does. Let's go x really big now. Whoop, negative 50. Does it look like it has a horizontal asymptote? This is 1, 2, 3. That's 1. Where does it look like it is? It look like that's where it is? Yeah. As x becomes really, really large, positive or negative, that kind of tells you maybe where the asymptote's going to be. Okay? So now, like I said before, it can cross this horizontal asymptote. That's okay. Vertically, it can't. This one can, but again, that doesn't really matter. I'm just telling you, if you graph something and you say to yourself, and we said it can never cross an asymptote, just vertically. But it kind of looks like it goes down a bit near the origin, okay, and then maybe up a bit. But that value right there, that's 1, that's negative 1, that's 0. It looks like kind of like a half, right? I could blow that up even more. It only goes from 1 to negative 1. So everything you see here, that's 0. This is 1 at the top, right? Does it look like a half now? For sure, yeah. Okay? So that took a, quite a lot of playing around with this thing before I kind of figured that out. But don't worry, I'll show you a way that you can see that when you do it. How about this guy? What happens if x is really huge? Do I care about 3x? No. Do I care about 7? No. All I care about is x squared over x cubed. So if that's 1,000 squared over 1,000 cubed, well, what's 1,000 times 1,000? That's a million. What's a, thousand, what's a million times 1,000? Like, now we're talking Bill Gates territory, aren't we? A billion. Add another three zeros, right? So as this gets even bigger, this becomes what? Like if the numerator, if the denominator gets a lot bigger than the numerator, eventually this thing's going to get closer and closer to zero, right? Let's see what this thing looks like x squared and 3, x and 7 divided by x to the power of 3 plus 5x plus 2. Does it look like I have a horizontal asymptote? And where does it look like it is? At 0.
Okay, comes down. Goes like that. And my window again was pretty huge, wasn't it? Let's just go minus 10. Let's blow that up around the origin a bit. Still look like the horizontal asymptote at zero, y equals zero. You betcha. You betcha. Okay, let's look at this guy. X cubed over x squared. This stuff, again, I don't really need to worry about. Now I've got a billion over a million if x is a thousand. Okay, um, the bigger this gets, the more that cube is going to have an effect. So you would think maybe this thing goes to infinity. X to the power of three. Actually, that's the only thing I'm going to plot, okay? Because most of this stuff doesn't really have an effect. Did we see a horizontal asymptote? I don't. So it's pretty hard to tell a pattern just looking at three graphs. But <clears throat> this guy, let's not look there. Let's just look here. What's going on? As far as the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator, what can we say? Same. If numerator and denominator have the same degree, we have horizontal asymptote at, is there a quick way to see where a half came from? Is that the coefficient of the numerator divided by the denominator? That's one divided by two. That's a half. The second example, these don't have the same degree. That's a squared over a cubed. And again, we're not going to look at a hundred examples, bit, but bit. If denominator degree is greater than the numerator, the thinking is it's always going to pull it to zero. Okay, if the denominator is bigger, cubed, fourth power, fifth power, that's completely going to have very little effect compared to x squared. Like it's going to, I mean, say the opposite. It's going to have a huge effect compared to x squared. It's going to always pull it down to zero. And if it does, then what does that mean? We have a horizontal asymptote at y is zero. And this situation was something different again. If the numerator degree is larger than the denominator degree. We have no horizontal asymptote. Well, something else might happen, but we're not there yet. Okay? Couple things you got to stick in your noodle.
because knowing that is a lot easier than trying to plot it and figure it out each time. As much as some of you think, well, I'll just put it on my graph and calculator and see and check, don't, okay? Takes too long and you still can make a mistake. So this is something we gotta stick in our noodle. What are the horizontal asymptotes of this guy? Well, all we need to look at is the leading coefficients, the two degrees. And don't assume the bottom ones will be arranged properly. You gotta look and see if anything, which is the largest power, right? So these have the same power. So what does that mean? We have a horizontal asymptote. Where? Yeah, that's it. What's the equation of that horizontal asymptote? Y is three fifths. Okay? So it's like biology, right? You just gotta kinda, only with numbers, stick it in your head. What's the largest degree on the top? That. On the bottom, I have that. Are those the same degree? No. But if the denominator is greater than the numerator, is that what we have here? Yes. So, I have a horizontal asymptote at y was zero. Okay? Because again, the denominator will get a lot, lot bigger than the numerator, and soon it will get closer and closer to zero as you look to either extreme of this graph. So that's the first example. That's the second example. Any guesses as to what this one will do? That's x to the fifth over x to the fourth. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? No. Okay, we're about a third done. If a function doesn't have an asymptote horizontally, it might have a slant asymptote. Something else we're gonna have to stick in our noodle. You can have an oblique one or a slant when the degree of the numerator is just one bigger than the denominator. Like this guy right here. We'll have a slant asymptote. Did we already see a slant asymptote? I think we did. Does the degree of this, is that one greater than the degree on the denominator? You bet. Slant asymptote. Okay. Which one of these will have a slant asymptote? First one? Yep. Okay. Make sure they're in the right order. This is an x squared over an x squared. Is that going to have a slant? Nope. It's going to have a horizontal. Where? At 1. But to answer the question, no slant. Is this going to have a slant? Yes. <clears throat> okay. How do you think we can graph a slant? Find the oblique asymptote or slant asymptote of that. Is that big enough? Hope so. I want to see the picture and this thing at the same time. Hmm. Well, let's graph it. How do I graph this thing? What did you do in grade 11? First place you started was x can't be 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay? That's a no-no. Can't do it. Vertical asymptote. Can't cross it. Can't touch it. 
gets closer and closer to it, but never and ever reaches it. So I'll just kind of plot some points. Yeah, I can put that on my graphing calculator and kind of get a picture. But let's just see kind of what's going on here. Let's go over here, x minus 4. If x is minus 4, this thing is negative 4 squared. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8 minus 8 over negative 4, negative 3, negative 7. So 16 over negative 7 is what? It's approximately negative 2 and 2 sevenths, right? Okay, so if x is negative 4, this is negative 2, and right about there. Okay? So, as this thing gets close to this, it's probably going to run down or it's going to run up, right? So, I don't know, what's a nice, how about the y-intercept? Is that a nice, easy point to plot? Let's see what's happening there. If x is 0, I got negative 8 thirds, right? which is, sorry, negative 8 over negative 3, which is positive 8 thirds, which is 2 and 2 thirds. Do we kind of see the direction this thing might go? Do I need to plot anymore? This is an asymptote, so it's going to go up here and do that. And it's got to go through that point it's got to go through that point, so I'm half done. I just put in two points. On this side, looks like I only have two points to put in here too. So let's put in one, two, three, four. That's going to be 16 minus 8 minus 8, which is what? 16 minus 16. Do I need to do the bottom? And if that one goes up, maybe this one goes up, maybe it goes down. Let's see what this point is. If x is 5, I got 25 minus 10 minus 8 over 2. So that's 15 minus 8, which is... 7 over 2, which is 3 and a half. See what that thing's going to do? It's got to go through there. Got to go through there. And that's an asymptote, so looks like it goes like that. What else do I know is going on? Do you see where it might be? The slant asymptote? Let me just put that there and leave it. It's going to kind of be here somewhere, right? How do I find out where it is? Remember doing this stuff? If this goes in here, what do I want to multiply this by? I want to go x. So that's x squared minus 3x. And that's gone. Negative, negative. That's x. Bring down the minus 8. And this goes in here just one time. Yep. Negative 2x minus minus 3x oh, yep. is x. Yeah, that's right. Minus 8. Okay, that goes in there one time. x minus 3. That's gone. Negative 8 minus minus 3 is minus 5. That's the remainder, but... Um, hmm. Some of you are going, hey, I didn't do that. I did synthetic division. Okay. 3... 1, negative 2, minus 8, bring down the 1, 
that's 3, that's 1, and again, I got a remainder of minus 5. This is x, and that's just the number 1. You know how to graph this line? The y equals x line up by 1. Does that kind of look like maybe where the oblique slant asymptote is? Cool, eh? So now we got another use for synthetic division. That's this line. So when it says find the slant asymptote, well, you factor this into this thing, and your equation that's left over, that will be the equation of the slant. And then some of you are curious, well, hey, I got one of these. All right, well, let's see what you get. X squared minus two, whoop, I got a bracket. All right, because it's all of the top divided by all of the bottom. And I can't remember what my window was at, but. Okay, there's the graph. Again, this thing, it looks like this is part of the graph. That's the vertical asymptote. Let's plug this guy in. This is when it would be nice to have a nice calculator with colors. Does that look like the slant asymptote? Or better, because it is. Okay, so I can check it like that. Okay, that's this graph. All right. Okay. Vertical asymptotes and holes. Let's dig into this a little deeper. Rational functions whose denominators have real roots will either have vertical asymptotes or holes. Holes occur when a factor cancels with a factor in the numerator. I already showed you one. Let's go have a look at it again. Do, 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 do. There it is. Did this thing cancel with that one? Yes. We ended up with a hole. Okay? So that's consistent. If it doesn't cancel, then we just have what I gave you in grade 11, which was vertical asymptote, okay? Point number three, determine if the function has a whole or a vertical asymptote and state its location, x coordinate only. Does something cancel here? No. So I have a vertical asymptote at x is 3. Okay. Uh, does something cancel on this guy? Yes. What does that mean? Do, 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 do. If it cancels, I get a hole. Okay, where is the hole? x is minus 2, because your graph, again, will just look like x plus 3 line, okay? It won't take this thing into account. And you guys know an x times an x, that should have been an x squared divided by this guy. It should have made some pretty picture, okay? But it doesn't because of cancel factors. Okay, let's go down here. Let's look at this guy. That cancels out, which means I have a hole at x is 3. But there's also a couple factors that don't cancel out. So that means I have vertical asymptotes at x is minus 2 and minus 1. 
I got another one? Oh, you're right. Thanks. Huh. Holes at 3 and negative 2 and a vertical asymptote at big long equal sign minus 1. Okay, I don't see anything canceling here. So no holes. Vertical asymptote at, and by the way, you can always plug these in, can't you? At 3 and 1. Just if you do, remember, you're going to have to double bracket everything, right? If you put that in your calculator, you got to go bracket that whole top, then go divide, bracket, bracket that whole bottom. Okay, then it'll plot it properly if you want to try to graph that thing. But if this is the question you got, we shouldn't need to. That cancels. I got a hole, x minus 3, and a vertical asymptote, x is 1. What well, cancels on the bottom? The bottom one. Or does it cancel? I guess is the question. I don't know yet. What do I got to do? I got to factor. X and 3 and X and 2. Yes, I do have something cancelling. That's a hole at X minus 2. Okay. Two more pages. If it does have a hole, we can still get the y-coordinate of it. Okay, we want to know where that hole is. Okay, and this one, it's not really that interesting, so let's change this. Make that a plus. It must have been a typo, because I don't know why they would say this and then not give you one that you had a hole in. Okay, so if I have that, well, look, I can cancel that factor, which means there's going to be a hole there. At minus 3. But if I want to know exactly where the hole is, I'm just going to take that negative 3 and plug it in here and find out what y is. Okay, with what's left. So I got minus 3 and 2, right, x plus 2. On the bottom I have x minus 3, minus 3 minus 1. So that's negative 1 over negative 4. So the y-coordinate is going to be a quarter. So as a coordinate, where's that hole? It's going to be exactly negative 3 and 1 quarter. Do I need to show you that, or do you believe me? Believe me? Save the five seconds. Okay, actually, it's just, this is the last page, okay? The, last, the very last page, I'll get you guys to do it, okay? So, ten more minutes. That's not that long. This is, hey, this is like university. Guy will sit there and blab for an hour and a half, right? Right, Brooke? Mm. Yeah, and half the people are sleeping. All right. So, are you asking yourself this question? This is Math 12. What the heck am I doing this for? I can just put this on my graphing calculator, get a nice picture. Well, feel free to read that. Okay? The more you understand of it, the better off your life will be. Trust me. Okay, so what can we do with this thing? Yes, I know any monkey could put that in their graph and calculator and maybe get a picture and maybe even draw the picture half-assed and maybe get half the marks on the test. But we want to get all the marks, don't we? Yes. So what do you want to do first? Do you see where this thing can't be zero? Do you see the restrictions on it? Let's use Math 11 language. What's the restrictions? Do you see when the denominator is zero? I don't either. What should we do first? Factor it. Have we seen this about eight times this lesson already? Yes. X plus 3 and X plus 2 is the top. What's the bottom? 
Little trick here, but let's see if we can do this by inspection, okay? I don't want to do the long way. I only got one choice to get to 2x squared. It's got to be 2x times x, right? No, no. Well, I could use fractions. Okay, what do you think, Alicia? I got it's a quarter times eight. Okay, feel free. You know, let's assume it's nice whole numbers. Okay, how do I get to three with nice whole numbers? One times three. Do I want to put three here and maybe add that to five x, or do I want to put three here and one there and maybe add to seven x? I want a 7. Right? Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So if they're simple, you can just do it with inspection. You don't have to, like, break this thing down into what multiplies to 6 and adds to 1. Okay? 6 and 1 and break that down. But feel free. If that's the way you do it, keep doing it. Okay. Now do I see when this thing can't be 0? Yeah, but now, is that a vertical asymptote or is that a whole? Does something cancel here? That's going to be a whole, not a vertical asymptote. This is when we're jumping from math 11 to math 12. You stupid. So there's a hole here at x is negative 3. Okay, I want the coordinates of this. I want to plot this thing. So if I put negative 3 back, I got negative 3 plus 2 over negative 3 times 2 plus 1, which is minus 1 over negative 6 and 1 is negative 5. So this whole is exactly going to be at negative 3 and 1 fifth, or 0 0.2, whichever you prefer. Okay? Let's go back and start at number one. Y-intercept. You don't have to factor it to get that, right? Zero, 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 zero. What's the y-intercept? Yeah, it's two. Six over three. Okay, put it in here, you get the same thing. Six over three. <clears throat> what happens at the y-intercept? X is zero, so there's another point, right? But you don't have to need, use that. You guys know that. Ooh, number two looks kind of hard. Or is it? Is there a slant? Oh, I just did that. That was tricky. Or is there a horizontal asymptote? The degrees are the same means what? Who's got a quick memory? Horizontal asymptote where? The coefficients at a half. Good. Okay, so I got x squared over 2x squared. Those cancel out. That's just a half. Factor. I already did. That should be the first place you start. How about an x-intercept? What happens at an x-intercept? y is 0. Yeah, but whatever I got left here, if y is 0, well, look at the numerator. When is this thing 0? x is negative 2. This one kind of will cancel out, but I know it's got a hole. I've got it taken care of. With what I have left, the only way this is going to be 0 is if x is minus 2. Okay, so I don't need to put 0 here and solve for the whole thing. Just do that. And lastly, a vertical asymptote, this guy doesn't cancel. So when is that 0? Some of us are pretty good with this. I'm going to pretend this is the first time I taught it. When is this thing zero? Solve it. When 2x is minus 1. When x is minus a half. The denominator will be zero. That's a point I can't do. So start there. That's a vertical asymptote. At x minus a half. 
Because that's the first thing I told you to do in Math 11, right? What? Hmm? Okay, where do you want to do next? It doesn't really matter. Let's do this. The y-intercept is where? 2. Is that enough? Can we do the graph with one point? Probably not, but you might have a pretty good guess where it's going. I got a hole, let's do this, at negative 3 and 1 fifth. Negative 3, this is 1, so 1 fifth would be 1 fifth the way to 1. That's on the other side of the vertical asymptote. Oh, speaking of asymptotes, do I have a horizontal one? At a half. So let's put that guy in there. You might be able to guess what this graph looks like with just two points. Is there anything else I know? An x-intercept at x minus 2. Now I got three points. Hmm? You see it? Good. Let's be absolutely sure. I want to plot this. I think I know it goes down like this, but let's be more accurate. Does it go like this? Does it go like this? Okay. Is that easy to do? When x is minus 1, Let's just go back here, put it in here, okay? x squared and 5x, let me write it down here, over 2x squared and 7x and 3. And yeah, you can put it in the factored one, okay? If x is negative 1, that's 1 minus 5 and 6 over negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 7 times negative 1 minus 7, and 3. That's 7 take away 5. That's 5 minus 7, negative 1. I'm pretty darn sure that thing will do this. Would you like to get another point in the right-hand side? Brianna would. Yes, Mr. Watson, please. I'm dying to know when x is 1, what this graph looks like. 1 and 5 and 6 over 2 and 7 and 3 is 12 over 12. Hey, that's nice. Is that all I need? I think so. There we go. Lastly, would you use your graphing calculator to check? I would too if it was my mark. Okay. Let's plug that in quickly. x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Graph. Are we happy? I'm very happy too. That's all you get. Do that. Okay, I will show you the answers. Tomorrow, start the assignment. I don't expect you to finish it. Okay, we're going to continue it tomorrow. I've revised the board if you haven't noticed, so have a look. Hopefully, that's the longest lesson this year. Because believe me, my mouth is dry. Where are you?
are you? Carmen, is the internet slow? Um, I don't know. I'm not better. Yes, you are. <laughs> 